buying your first guitar. Um, there's a lot to look for. Um, the first point is that uh, if you're gonna play in a chair, you're gonna have to take that into consideration. Consideration. So obviously, a smaller body would probably be best. So I tend to go for like half to three quarter size guitars, depending on the company. Um, I found some great travel guitars. Trinity, one of them. Hey, Joey. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, you really do have to look at how well a guitar fits on your lot, for example. Because if you play a two-hour show, let's say, down the road, if you're not comfortable, you don't even play well. So that, that's a big uh, point. Another point would probably be uh, action, which is three nights from, from the fretboard to the strings. Um, that is really important because high action is, you know, makes your play life very difficult. I should know. I've had lots of trouble. Um, another thing too is the type. Most people tend to go for skill. I know because I did. I was adamant about playing skill for seven years. And then once I did, once I decided I didn't want to murder my fingers anymore. I went to nylon because nylons naturally have lower action. You know what? What point? The difference out in the in the photos here. But uh, yeah, buying a pretty guitar can be intimidating. It can be scary because you don't know what to what to look for. But I mean, just just go with. What feels natural to you? I mean, if something works for you, just do it. And I mean, price range, it's kind of up to you. Not entirely up to you. Some guitar starter kits are great. I know Yamaha has a kit that's fantastic. So if you just want to, do a bundle, do that. If you just want to get a, a guitar on its own, do that. I mean, the thing with buying your first guitar is no one can really tell you what to do because it's entirely up to you and what you need. Um, and you're probably gonna go through several guitars before you find your bet. I have five currently and I'm still not where I need to be. It's been a lot of crying and some of them you're not gonna end up using. I know by my experience there's some that you're just not gonna end up loving as much as you thought you would. So I mean that's the thing with purchasing an instrument. It's like purchasing a car. Look, there's really no right or wrong. It's just whatever feels best to you. Like I said, well, we'll put up the, the differences here in a sec. But it kind of depends on what you can do physically, too. If you have more strength, in your left hand than, than the average impaired individual, that still might be best for you. If you're like me and you don't, a nylon might be the way to go for you. It just depends. And my biggest advice is to go into a shop and just try out a few. <laughs> just test one of you. I, I know I, I spent about two hours at a guitar center one day. Just, <laughs> Just driving guitars pretty much. And uh, as far as body shape, I mean, that's, uh, that's entirely up to you. Um, I personally 
don't have any with the cutaway just because I don't need it based on the position I'm playing. The cutaway isn't necessary, but if you don't need it, go for it. Again, no one, no one can really tell you what to do. We can kind of just give you guidelines because this is kind of a free reign. This is kind of where we don't come into play so much because we're not there with you to, to help you figure it out. Let's go with steel. Steel string guitars are the most common types of guitars. Those are the guitars you hear. You pretty much have probably seen on stage. Um, but steel string guitars, because they have steel strings, are a little harder to play. They're a little harder on the fingers. It's gonna be a little more achy. Um, and body width can be a little larger. So if you want something that's not going to have enough or not going to have a lot of wood to get your arm over, that still probably isn't the best option. Now, um, people do um, worry about sacrificing sound if they don't get a steel. There's not really much tonal differences between the steel and the nylon. I would say nylon just sounds more muted, I guess you would say. I don't know if you would agree with that, but there isn't many tonal differences. It's basically just body shapes and build. Um, now, when nylon steel, when nylon guitars are also known as classical guitars, and those are kind of your more old timey looking guitars. Those are kind of what you think when you when you think of guitars from a hundred years ago. Um but again they are easier on the fingers. Um action is a lot lower so if you have limited strength, these are gonna be your best friend. I'm actually getting one today, so ha ah. Um, but yeah, um, so if you have limited strength, a nylon is probably going to be the way to go for you. They also tend to be a little smaller, so it's nicer on your lap. Again, I would not advise a jumbo size of either if you're, if you're looking to play in a chair or across your lap. I would not advise a jumbo. Good. That would just be crazy. You wouldn't be able to be seen if you did a jumbo. <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Um, but I mean, again, it all depends on the player. It's very player oriented. There's really no right or wrong. So my biggest suggestion is just go try some out. And whatever fits, make that work. And the, and the cool thing about guitars is you can make adjustments after you purchase them. I know because I've done many, many adjustments to mine over the years. I've shaped things down a little bit because sometimes, for example, bridges on steel will come a little too high. And uh, so I've had to shave that down a bit on a few of my guitars, so that's what's good about guitars is you can make adjustments. It's, it's not like one, two, but that's the way it is, and that's the way it needs to stay. You can easily find a repair shop or a luthier to make those adjustments for you if you're not comfortable doing them on your own yet, which I don't recommend. If you're just a beginner, don't go shaving things down on your own. It's <laughs> not even uncomfortable doing it some of you though. So, so I wouldn't recommend doing it as a fresh beginner. It needs to be someone that knows what they're doing because if you shave things down too much, that could cause buzzing, which is not only annoying, but unpleasant to 
looked into. And if you get your thumb towards it, guess what? It's going to make you play it less. So yeah, I think that's everything for finding your first guitar. There's not really much more to add because like, like I said about four times, so it's very player based. There's no right or wrong. There's no, you should do this instead of that. It's, it's very what works for you. And I mean, ultimately, it might take you a while. I'm not saying you're gonna find a guitar on your first trip. <laughs> Cause that's very rare when that happens. And don't jump in a tent right away. If you're not a thousand percent confident about a guitar, don't, don't jump into it. Just, just cause you wanna start do your research. Test drive some, do some body type research. See what will work best for you and then go in and make the investment because playing an instrument is is a big investment. It just takes time and consideration. It's, it's not like, oh, this was pretty. <laughs> Which that does have have a little bit to do with it. I'm not gonna say that. Because again, like we said, if it isn't visually appealing, you don't you want to pick it up. But don't be too decision off how pretty a guitar is. I know because I've done it. And sometimes the pretty guitars do not work out. Like that's just how things go. I, for example, have one standard full body acoustic that I don't really play because playing on my life, a full body acoustic just doesn't work too well, I end up shooting it off my lap. So, yeah, so, I mean, it really has to be very considerate to, to your physical needs as well, not just your musical needs. And I mean, as far as holding neck in place, if you are gonna play on your lap, use a bar stool, use any type of table you can, think of for now until you end up building something like I have, which we're hoping to mass produce soon. So people won't have to use stools anymore. But I personally use it used a stool for about four years ago before we broke the stand. And don't get me wrong, it's gonna get annoying having a stool in the way. I can't tell you how many times I banged into the stool. Uh, it was a, it was a fun time, but you'll figure out your setup as you go. I mean, no one can tell you what to do. Um, people can guide you, of course, but no one can definitively uh, tell you your setup, but you, because you're the only one that knows your body. You're the only one that knows what's gonna work and what's not. You're the only one that knows if a lightweight guitar is gonna end up flying off your lap. <laughs> because there's, there's a fine balance between having something lightweight, but having something with enough weight <laughs> so it doesn't move around. And I mean, playing on my lap, I've done a lot of experimenting. Because there are guitars that are really heavy to the point that you can't play them for very long. Because you just can't stand them being on your lap for too long. So it's a very fine balance between having something that's not going to fly off your lap, but still going to be comfortable to play. And if you have one little issue with the guitar, don't buy it. <laughs> Because I can promise you that one issue is going to trade it to 50 once you bring it over. So, um, you might be thinking, well, when do I get acoustic or electric? Well, acoustic is easier because you can just grab and go. You don't really need to do the whole 
set up situation, but electric is they are thinner and we'll put up some comparison here, but uh, they are thinner, so you do have less water to get over. But again, they do tend to be heavier. You do have a cable to worry about. Unless you have one of those fancy Bluetooth transmitters that they make now that I don't even have yet. Um, so you do have a cable to worry about, especially if you plan a trailer that could be very hazardous. <laughs> I know, because I'm all, I've almost ran over a cable a few times. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, the main difference is her, obviously sound, body type. Um, you can do much cooler stuff on an electric. I will give it that. You can you can do a wider range of techniques, but also the breaths tend to be closer together. So you don't really have much room to, uh, there's not much room for error with an electric. Because even if you're one part above or one part below, I did that way with an acoustic, you can kind of make it to where it's not that noticeable, you know? But with an, with an electric, you, you can't really get away with it. Um, and strains are closer together too. So there's, there's more of a chance of you accidentally muting a strain you didn't want to mute. As opposed to an acoustic, the, the spacing of the strains is a little wider. Also, the action on the electric. Yeah. The strings. The action on the electric is. strings, which is going to hurt a little bit more, but the action is a little lower. So. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons. I do have both. I I personally tend to pick up my acoustic a little more just because of the ease of not having to wait for someone to set me up or, you know, it's just more of a hassle. But I do have both. I mean, the action on, on the electric is definitely lower, but you can also do that with an acoustic. Like, that's the thing with an acoustic. You can make it play like an electric. If you really work at it, you can make it play like an electric, which is nice. Now, if you want to have both, that's, that's totally fine too. I mean, I... I personally do, I just don't pick up my electric as much because they are heavier. So you're not gonna be able to play for very long if you do play on your lap because they are a lot denser. Since it's the last word, they're a lot denser. Um, but also like people people are trying to ask me, well, if you don't play an electric, don't you sacrifice like how do you think? No, because you can buy an acoustic pedal though. Look, I saw an acoustic overdrive the other day. I was like, okay. Okay, that's the thing with this day and age. You, you do find, you do find more cooler effects for an acoustic now than you were, let's say, even 10 years ago. Because technology has advanced so much that you can do so much more in an acoustic than you ever could. It's not just a rhythm guitar anymore. Like I've seen people do some crazy stuff on acoustics that you wouldn't even think of. <laughs> like I saw someone put a whammy bar on an acoustic the other day, I was like, okay, all right. Um, but yeah, uh, those are really the main differences. Again, we'll put up comparison pictures here. I'm gonna point stuff out for you guys, but it's kind of up to you what you want to play towards. Again, if you don't want a big setup ordeal, go for an acoustic. But if you really 
don't want to sacrifice that electric town if you want to go for more rock style stuff then definitely go for the electric again i have both i love both it just depends on what you're going for pretty much um but as far as playing differences that's that's pretty much it the only thing i would advise with an electric is if you can't do knobs either find an extension or just have someone do knobs for you, which kind of defeats the purpose. But if that's what needs to happen, go for it. Because I feel like knobs on an electric are super small. Like, I don't know if you feel that way, but to me, they are really small. So <laughs> that's someone with fun motor issues. Knobs are really my friend. So what I tend to do, I tend to nudge them with my forearm. Just because my forearm already sits there. So I kind of just reach over with my forearm and do it that way. Because I know with my hand, it's going to take five minutes. So if you don't want to spend five minutes, just pick to your down, just nudge it with your forearm. Nudge it with whatever you can. Now, I do have a friend that has four on extension, they were made for um for a car, but he brings them up to his guitar. Um, so he has full on extension for, for his knobs, which is crazy cool. Um, so if you didn't want to go that route, you could. Um, I've also seen people do like strings around their knobs, like knitting strings around their knobs to give them more leverage. But I also feel like that might be too small for some people. Like some people can't hold on to a piece of string. So again, like if you don't want to play electric, you are going to have to do a little more work to make it work. But it'll be off once you get that grinder down you want. I know in the, in the course intro, we wanted something really grungy and boy, did we get it. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's entirely up to you. Again, there's, there's not really much we can tell you. We can kind of just give you guidelines from, from experience. But yeah, let's move on to uh, Episode 2.